Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the, the lecture of the uh, principle of the chemical processes. <coughs> so today, let's get started uh, to introduce the chemical engineering. So uh, let's have a quiz first. So what is the chemical engineering? What is, what, what's, what's the definition of the chemical engineering? As you are a chemical engineer in the future. So what is the chemical engineering? Why you choose chemical engineering as your subject in the college, okay? In the university, why? What's the driving force to let you recognize or to let you want to study as a chemical engineer. <laughs> so I give you some options uh, to let you choose. The first one, okay. The second one, and the third one, which one you choose? First one is, well, you can make a lot of chemicals. For example, you can make a lot of fantastic chemicals. Second one, your mass, your mass, your mass is better than chemist. chemist. Oh, but your chemist is your chemist. Your chemistry is better than the mathematics, mathematical, mathematics. Then, okay. The, sec, the third option is the chemical engineering is the combination of chemistry and engineering, so it becomes chemical engineering. Which one is the the best option? Well, uh, there's no exact answer of this question. So the answer is none of the above. Why? Because the definition of the chemical engineering is non-universally accepted definition, okay? Of the chemical engineering existed. And the almost every type of the skill works you can think of is done somewhere by people educated as chemical engineers. That, that, what does it mean, this mean? I will, I'm going to tell you later. Right, so if we know the definition of chemical engineering, so what are the, what are, why you want to become a chemical engineer? Again, this is a quiz. The first option is an engineer who manufactures chemicals. Okay, this is the option one. Option two is the, a chemist who works in a factory. Okay, the, set, the, the third option is a glorified plumber. So which one is the bad, which one is the, the correct answer? Which one? Again, none of above. Why? This is the answer. The chemical engineers are comfortable with chemistry, but they do much more with the knowledge than just make chemicals. So not only you learn how to make chemicals, but also you need to know how to do a lot of things combined with the chemicals or products, okay? Second one, the chemical engineer is meant to reveal that makes the feel different from other branch of the engineering, like mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, civil, civil engineering, or <clears throat> information, or compu computer engineering. You are different from them because you learn something different from them, of course. But I think the chemical engineer in the engineering college is very different from others. And also they are very, chemical engineering is very important in the college of engineering. Okay, so the breadth of the scientific and te technical knowledge inherited in the professions has caused some to describe the chemical engineer as a universal engineer. What's universal engineer? What's, what's the definition of, what, what's, what is the universal engineer? This is the Chinese, okay? 
the chemical, this is universal engineer is called 全能工程师. So that means you need to do, you need to know everything in the field, in the field of engineering. You need to know electrical engineering. You need to, you need to know the mechanical engineering. You need to know computer engineering. You need to know civil engineering. You need to know environmental engineering. So in the chemical engineering, we will teach you the fields of engineering. And, but you only touch, you don't learn deep in that field. For example, you don't learn a lot in chemical, in, you don't learn a lot in electrical engineering, but you, you, learn, you, you need to learn basic knowledge of the electrical engineering. You need to learn basic knowledge of the mechanical engineering, for example, okay? So let's go back to what's the differences between science and engineering. Why you choose engineering? College. Why you don't choose science college? When you, go, when you come to the university, why? What's the differences? Okay, the main differences is you make, you make more money than the science college, right? After you graduate, you got better salary compared to if you do your uh, study in science college. But why? Because you make money. Well, this is, this is not exact answer, but what I want to tell you is the differences between science and engineering. Uh, as you can see, I, we divided these uh, figures into two parts. The first part is the way of the scientific thinking. Okay, the way of scientific thinking and the way of the engineering thinking. That will be different. And the training will be different too. Okay, in the, in, in the training of in the science college and also the training in the engineering college, they are totally different. Because what we want to tell you, what we want to train you, it will be uh, for you to be an engineer, not to, not, to, not to be a scientist. Okay, so what's the differences between science and engineering? You know, for science, you need to have some kind of creativity, which is very, very new. You never know what's going on. And you invent something which is new, okay? And you also have some knowledge. You, you, need, you, need to know, you need to learn mathematics. You need to learn chemicals, chemistry. You need to learn physics. You need to learn biology. So combined with the creativity and, and the knowledge, you can understand the phenomena and also mechanisms of the metals or the substrates, substance. Okay? And you know this knowledge and you, you know the fundamental uh, phenomena or mechanisms, how it works, and you can create something new. Okay? You can create something new. And when you create something new and you, you see how it works, that's, that's the the part of the science, okay? And what engineers do, do is you take this kind of new knowledge or you, you take this kind of new materials to make something which works for the world, which is good for human beings, which is good, you can make it as a product, okay, as a product. So, and then once you make a product, and it is good for the society. And once you make products, and you need, you need to think how to make this product, to make it max production. Okay, you want to, from one product to become products. I mean, thousand and thousand products. And this is kind of engineering way of thinking. Okay, so you need to make production of your product, okay? And you need to think how to design, how, how to design the production, okay? How to works, how to make it operate, how to make it safe, you know, like SpaceX. You know, you know SpaceX, right? The, the, the rocket, okay? Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk. So you need to make a shuttle, you need to make the shuttle. Okay, and and you need to make mass production. But 
when you do this, you need to think of the needs from the society and also with ethic. You don't want to steal somebody's knowledge and make your products. That's not, that's not ethic. That's not allowed to do it, right? Okay, so this is the way of the thinking is different, okay? In terms of the science and engineering. Okay, so let's make an example of the, the College of the Science uh, in the Department of Chemistry and Department of Chemical Engineering. What's the difference between Chemistry Department and Chemical Engineering Department? Okay, this is chemist. The chemist, they know how to, they need to study organic uh, chemistry, they need to know the kinetic, they need to know the catalyst, they need to know the analysis of chemistry analysis of the chemicals. And there are some overlap studies, like for the chemical engineering, uh, as a student in a chemical engineering department, you also need to know, learn this knowledge. But you, you, don't, you don't learn so deep in this kind of knowledge, okay? So instead, you need to learn some of this, and you also learn, need to learn some of this. This is the engineering, the field of engineering, okay, like the speed, the separation process, the transfer, the transfer, the unit operation, and the design of the reactors, okay, a design of the processes, okay. So uh, this is the difference between the, the chemist and the chemical engineering, uh, chemical engineers, okay. So let me make an example for you. Uh, to know what's the differences between chemists, chemist and the chemical engineering, or science and the engineering. This is one of This is one of one of a uh, good example for you to understand. Do you know this medicine? What is this called? Penicillin. What is this? This is a, a medicine called uh, antibiotics. Consensu antibiotics. Okay, this was invented. Uh, in the early 20th century by uh, uh, a professor, Fermin, in United Kingdom. You know where, do you know where is the United Kingdom? In England, right? Okay, United Kingdom. Right, and then in the beginning, they found this chemical. They don't know how it works. They don't know how to use this chemical. And by the 1930, by the 1939, the professor, Froray found that this is the, the chemical which can use for antibiotics. Okay? And now, if, and after one century later, you know, everybody knows this is a good chemicals. Okay? And then you can use it as a kind of liquid foam, uh, pellet foam, and powder foam. Okay? So antibiotics is very important. Why? And in the, in the old time, like one century, uh, like in the beginning of the 20th centuries, this one is very expensive. Penicillin is very expensive. Why? Because you cannot make you cannot mass product, mass mass produce this kind of medicine, and you can just produce a little, a little amount. So if you you can if you just have a little amount, everybody, everybody want to buy it. Then what happened to the price? Price goes up, right? Price the the, the price of the penicillin will be very expensive. But this is done by chemists. Chemists. Okay, so chemists they say, okay, my job finish. That's my job. Okay, that's all I can do. I can produce one gram per day, not one hundred ton per day. So it's, it's, it's very expensive. For example, if we can produce Coca-Cola, we, we say Coke, right? If we can produce Coca-Cola, one can a day, not one ton or 10 tons a day, Coca-Cola will be very expensive, right? Okay, so that's why, you know, antibiotics is very important. And if, uh, if a, lot, a lot of people won't need these antibiotics, and you don't produce enough antibiotics or penicillin for, for, for them to use, then what happened? People die, people die. 
This is one of example in the second, first world war and second world war. Okay, because penicillin was very expensive and not enough to use. So a lot of people die, not because of, not because of the battle. They don't die in the battle. They die because they, they get injured, they get hurt. And then because uh, they, was, they was moved back from the battle to the safe place and they die. Why? Because they don't have enough penicillin to use. No reason, not enough. Okay, so in the Second World War, you know, the, the soldier doesn't die after battle. It's because they have enough penicillin. So this poster say that thanks to the penicillin, he will come home because he got injured, he won't die. Okay? So how are you going to do the mass production of penicillin? For a chemist, this is not engineering way of doing. You know, penicillin is the process is easy. You just know you just need a beaker. And you put the you put the things in, you put the chemicals into the beaker and you shake. You shake it. Okay, and you can make penicillin for for some days. Okay? And in the very beginning, they don't know how to make do the mass production of the penicillin. So they have thirty hundred thousand beakers. You know, thirty hundred thousand beakers like this. And they shake. And you know how long does it take? And how many human how many workers need to work on these thirty thousand beakers? That's a lot. That's why it's expensive. Right? That's why it's not enough for soldiers to use. Am I right? That's right, right? Okay. Is this a clever way to do it? To do the mass production if you have thirty thousand uh three hundred three hundred thousand beakers? As you can see, this is not a clear, clever way to do it. The clever way is, can we do a process, can we make a processes to make it? For example, if I have a reaction, react, reactor one, reactor two, reactor three, reactor four, reactor five, of course you don't understand what's going on inside. You don't, you don't need to understand because you are too young to know, but don't worry. If you have a reactor like this and you put it together, then you put a raw material into the first reactor and it starts to work from the first reactor to the second reactor to third process to fourth process and make this reactor to, to become a process. And penicillin come out from, from this side. So the raw material fit, you fit the raw material into this, re, into this process and the penicillin come out every second, a lot. So you produce a lot of penicillin. And uh, as a result, there are two things come out. First, you save life, right? You save a lot of life also. Okay, second is you make it, the product very, very cheap. So you can sell it, you can make, you can, everybody can use penicillin. Pen, penicillin. Is it wonderful? It is wonderful, right? So who did this? Chemical engineers. They make a batch product to become a continuous process, mass production. Thanks for the chemical engineers, right? So the life become wonderful. Okay, this is the line. This is the production line of the penicillin, just for your information. Okay, it's an easy to make a production line. No, you know, if, in order to make a production line, it, it takes time and it costs money, costs a lot of money. So you don't, you don't just think and do it. No, you don't. So first of all, you need to do it from the lab, from, from the lab, okay? You work with the chemist. Chemical engineers work with the chemist. And then they realize how it works and they start to do the small scale test. Okay, and it works and go to the middle scale. And then, because if you want to make a big scale, you spend a lot of money and a lot of time, so you need to do what? You need to do simulation. 
you need to do the mathematic simulation. You need to predict whether you scale up whether it works or not. And once you do the calculation, you do the simulation, you make the optimized process of parameters, you realize, yes, we can do it. And we start to work. We start to build a factory and we make it work. Okay, this is the best, this is, is a normally normal process for from the lab to production. Okay. Right. Okay, so um, let's go back to the uh, the story of the chemical engineering, the beginning, the history of the chemical engineering. So what is the, why, the, why we have the Department of Chemical Engineering? Who is the one start to think we need chemical engineers? Okay, this is the one, you know, the, the crude oil. The crude, the crude oil come out, we don't know why is this. Because it, we just drill the, the hole in the ground and the, the, the oil come out. It's black, oily, dirty. And nobody knows what can we do, what can we use this for? Because it's oily, right? But what they know is if they have a, a fire, they put this fire into this oil, it gets burned. So people think, well, probably we can do something about this oil. Okay, it becomes what? It becomes energy. Energy. That's what we you use your for your motorbike, right? You use when you cook, right? You use when you cook at home. Okay. So this is called refinery. Refinery. So chemical and the, the, the scientists think that wow, we can do something with this oil, dirty oil, the crude oil. So we can separate these uh, mixtures or complex. Because there are a lot of compounds, like there are more than ten compounds. Can you can you put can you have this crude oil to make it pure ten compounds? So we can use these ten compounds, for example. So chemical engineering is that conversion the raw material into a valuable products. So this crude oil we can make it become many many type of different products, and we make money. You know what? Now the 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 petrol. You know, the petrol you use in a gas station is very cheap. You know, when you buy a bottle of the clean water in a 7 Eleven, you know how much is 20, 20 what? It's uh, 20 NT dollars, right? As the oil is much cheaper than the water. Why? Thanks, chemical engineers. Okay, they make this happen. The oil is very cheap. Right. So at that time they are thinking, can we find a group of engineering engineers to work on this project? So that's why the origins of the chemical engineering is 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 coming out. So the first one, thanks to uh, George Andrew Davis, he's a British. Okay, he start to uh, is regarded as a founding father. Okay, so he's the father of the chemical engineering. Okay. Of the discipline of the chemical engineering. Okay, he also published a, a books, a handbooks of chemical engineering in the uh, beginning of uh, in the nineteen nineties. Okay. So we have the knowledge of chemical engineering, and uh, who give the first lecture of the chem of the chem for the chemical engineering? That's this is the one in MIT. This is a Will uh, Louis Will Mill Norton. Okay. He's, he started to give a lecture of the chemical engineering in NIT. Okay, the first department of chemical engineering is the University of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. We call U Penn, right? U, U Penn. Very famous university. Okay, anyway. As a chemical engineer, you need to know this, right? Who is the father of the chemical engineering? Okay, who gave the first lecture to the of the chemical engineering? Which which uh which university start to have the chemical engineering department? Okay. So chemical engineering basically you need to know not many many uh knowledge from the science, like math, mathematics, physics, 
chemistry, biology. And for the chemical engineering, you need to know the three things. Unit operation, transfer, transport phenomena. Okay, unit operation including many, many unit process. You can regard this unit process as a kind of a unit. So you put this unit together, it becomes a process. Okay? So basically you need to learn unit first, like burn, like stirring, like cooling, okay? Like distillation, evaporation, filtration, like extraction, okay? So you need to know this, do this. You might say, well, Professor, I know this. If you want to burn something, you just have a pack, you just have an oil and it just light on, you get burned, right? But if you want to do the stirring, you have beaker and you, you put your uh, uh, spatula to, to do the stirring. Listen, this is, when you just say this, this is chemistry, this is not chemical engineering. What we, are, what we want to learn here is, we want, to know, we want to do it as a mass production. What is mass production? The mass production is, you want to do it big, like in terms of tons. Okay, in terms of huge, huge amount. Okay, so how about transport phenomena? Transport phenomena is that you need to understand how momentum works, how mass works, how energy works in this process. Okay, and also you need to know the thermodynamics. And you also know, need, you, you might don't understand why thermodynamics. Don't worry, you are very soon know why thermodynamics. It's very important. Right, so chemical engineering kinetics, okay? So, so in order to know, in order to be aware of the chemical engineering, and you need to know this knowledge, okay? Right, uh, let's, think, let's uh, discuss the, uh, the achievement of the chemical engineers in the history. First, Atoms, you know, isotopes. Isotopes is very important in the medicine. So if you have isotopes, you can do a lot of like MRI. You know MRI, right? So you have isotopes. Oh, it kind of a ray X. It is kind of uh, isotope can do this um, medicine uh, medical treatment. And plastic, there is from crude oil. If you have crude oil, you you extract something to become a, a kind of small molecules. You make small molecules to become big molecule. Now what, what we call monomer become polymer. Polymer is plastic. So as you can see, you, you use a lot of plastic in your daily life. Even your clothes are made of plastic, right? Your pens, uh, your, your notebook, your mobile phone, your, uh, your bag, okay, your, your bag. Okay, so, and also the, uh, the, uh, the reactor, human being reactor. Okay, you know the um, ECMO. ECMO is kind of a combination of the, uh, the, the pump and the, the heart and the, the lump. This is invented by chemical engineers. So they, they use artificial heart and artificial lump become, uh, become ECMO. Okay, so this is a reactor. Okay, and also medicine, right? I hope I just give you an example of medicine. So you need to do max production. Okay, and uh, artificial fibers. I hope you you understand. Recently, in uh, recent ten, uh, three years or five years, you if you go to Uniqlo, you know the the, the place where she sell clothes, you know, and in the winter you can have this kind of heat tech. Once you have a, your underwear, it's very warm, so it's heat tech. So this is a very special fibers, okay? And in summer, you got very hot, you don't want to wear this heat tech underwear, but if you have this kind of air rings, this kind of, if when you have this clothes, you, you, got, you don't get hot. The, the vapor will deliver very soon away from your body, so you feel cool. So this is, this is the, uh, the fibers made by chemical engineer. And liquefy, liquefy air or liquefy things. You know, when you have, when you go to 7-Eleven and you eat 
a bread with covered with a plastic bag, right? The inside the bread, like, uh, inside the plastic bag, they fill of the, the nitrogen. So they put nitrogen into this, uh, the, the plastic bag. Why? They don't put air into this. Because oxygen, right? They don't want, you, you don't, because oxygen will, will make this, the bread get expired very soon. Okay, that's why you put nitrogen. You need to put pure nitrogen into this bag. Okay, so how you separate oxygen and nitrogen, and you only get nitrogen out, and you, only, you put the nitrogen air, and you, you put the nitrogen gas into the bag to, 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 make, the expi uh, to make the food can, you, can, be, uh, can be, uh, last long, right? Okay, and also a clean environment. And the food, this is very important. You know, in, uh, in last century, in the beginning of last century, in the beginning of 20th, 20th centuries, a lot of people died because they run out of food. They don't have enough food, okay? And chemists, thanks for the chemists and chemical engineers, they, they make the fertile, okay? Artificial fertile, so they can make a lot of food. Okay, if you have a lot of food, nobody will get hungry. Nobody will die because of hunger. Okay, and also some of the chemicals from the crude oil. This is also important. And uh, artificial rubbers. Okay, you have a neutral rubber, and then once we found the neutral rubber is not enough, so chemical and chemical engineers found out how to make artificial rubber. So it become very cheap now. Right. So, so today's chemical engineering process, uh, industry is that it's anywhere. In, if it is in anywhere you live, uh, you can use like energy, clothes, food, living, education, communication, environment, Aerospace, health, and resources is anywhere. Okay, so the basic is that the chemical the chemi chemical industry is from you get resources from the nature, from the nature, and you take these natural resources to make to get the raw material out, and then from the raw materials you do this you do the processes. You make chemicals, okay? And from these chemicals, you make products. And when you, once you make products, you you do you give these products for people to use, okay? So this is how chemical engineering works. So chemical industry, including a few parts, a, a few fields. First one is for living, right? Second is for uh, advanced materials, like you know, uh, semiconductor. I hope you you understand the semiconductor. Now, most of you uh, in the future might work in this industry because this is a very strong. Uh, we have very strong technology, and we have very big company in Taiwan, right? Right and biotechnology and also energy right like batteries in the future like let uh what's that tesla right tesla you need batteries and then you can put the battery into the tesla car and green chemicals and narrow materials and uh, narrow industry so let's introduce this one by one Okay, so for the, 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 some of, some of the um, people think that chemical engineering only make the crude oil to become um, products. Actually, um, this, is, this is partially correct because we make a lot of products from the crude oil. And then we make this crude oil to become uh, products to let people use. For example, like this, 
the uh, the the fibers, the five artificial fibers you can use for many many applications like the the firefighter. They need they need they are, uh, they need a clothes to protect high temperature to protect to protect the fire, right? And for some of the engineers, they need to go to a clean room, so they need to have a uh, anti-statics clothes. So this is you need to design this kind of products. Okay, and how about the advanced material? So this is one of the strong industry in Taiwan, you know, semiconductor industry. Uh, the the raw material is uh, silicon dioxide, SiO2, SiO silicon dioxide, and you make silicon dioxide become silicon. Okay, so this is silicon debris. Okay, and you make silicon debris to become silicon ingots, like ingots. Do you know the purity of this ingot? Do you know the purity of this ingots of the silicon? Purity of the silicon in these ingots. You know the pure the pure gold is ninety part ninety nine point nine nine percent, right? That means that the pure gold, and the pure silicon is ninety nine point nine 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 nine. So it's very very pure, very very pure silicon. Okay, how can engineers make this kind of piece of art, very excellent purity? Chemical engineers, okay, very very pure, and then they make this very high purity silicon ingot to become a silicon wafer, silicon wafer, okay, and then they move they move this silicon wafer to become a silicon chips. This is chips. For example, they might have two hundred chips. Okay, if you just take this this chips out. Do you know how many transistors inside this chip? How many transistors inside this chip? Two trillion. Two trillion. Okay? It's a lot. Uh, sorry, sorry, not trillion. Uh, 20 billion. 20 billion. Okay? It's a lot. So who make this? Engineers. Engineers. Especially chemical engineering, chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, and also electrical engineers. Okay? Piece of art, you know. This is proud of Taiwan. Okay, this is the number one in Taiwan, number one in the world. Okay, TSMC, right? All right, so this is the uh, IC is integrated circuits. It's a very important industry in Taiwan. And as you can see, you have many, many um, uh, transistors in the chip. OK, this is another uh, advanced materials, liquid crystal display, right? OK, this is in liquid crystal display. We all use this. And this is uh, <coughs> biotechnology. You know, um, you have been COVID-19, right? The COVID-19, uh, we have a kind of um, vaccine, which it can, can be used to uh, overcome the COVID-19. So this is biotechnology, okay, biomedicine, right? So for chemical engineer, like, as you, as you know that the, hu the human, the body in the, Human being is like a biological reactors, a lot of biological reactors in your human in your human being body. Okay, and you can design, you can make it artificial. Okay, by chemical engineering. Okay, so this is the example of the bio reactor and bio bio biotechnology processes to the. Or wastewater treatment. Okay, so uh, for the biotechnology, like artificial heart, right? As I just told you, ECMO, 
right? And a biochip and uh, artificial red blood cell. Okay, another example is energy. Energy, the industry of energy is going to brew up, you know, especially for the batteries and the for fuel cell, right? I hope you know that. And green chemicals. Green chemicals is what? Green chemicals is that if you have chemicals, and this chemical need to be, if you make a product, and the product you you regard the product is a eco product. Eco means ECO, right? ECO means what? Economic ecological friendly. So it, it means that this product is good for the society. It is not harmful for the for the society. Okay. However, if the per the if you make this kind of product using a toxic chemicals, this is not allowed. This is not correct. You don't want that. You don't want to let this happen. So you need to use green chemical to make eco products. Okay. You don't want to use toxic chemicals to make eco products. Okay. Okay. So nanotechnology, technology, just for your information. Right, so the study in the chemical engineering is that basically you need to have two, the knowledge divided into two parts. The first part is scientific knowledge. The second part is technical knowledge. So the scientific knowledge, you make these two knowledge together, it become a chemical engineering. So you need to do a design of the process and you need to construct the process and you need to operate the process in a safe and economical fashion. So when you, when you design, when you construct, when you operate the process, you need to always think of safe and economical, okay? Matter, okay? You need to think of safe and economical fashion, always. And then, and then you can make a profitable manufacturing process. So for the scientific knowledge, as I told you, the mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology. And for the techn technical knowledge, for those of you who has been who is not the freshman, you might be second year student or third year student, I'm sure some of you Notice transport phenomena and unit operations, thermal dynamics, chemical reaction engineering. So for this and engineering mathematics, okay, for those for as a chemical engineer, you need to know these four topics very, very well, right? Very, very well. These are the, the basic four knowledges, uh, four subjects you need to know. Right? And after that, you need to learn something from chemical engineering, uh, electrical engineering. You need to learn something from computation. You need to learn something by, uh, from the bioengineering department. And also you need to learn the process control and design and analytical chemistry. So if you have some basic knowledge from the chemistry department and some knowledge is from the chemical engineering department, and then now you can work on the applications. So once you have enough once you have strong knowledge, then you start to work on the technology. That means you can speed up the, the research or you can speed up uh, the process, right? Based on your knowledge. So like energy, like environment, like chemical process, like advanced material, like biotechnology, okay? So, this is the subject you need to know from the chemical engineering, from the chemistry. This is the, the subject you need to know, you need to study, okay, in the future. From the mathematics, from the physics, from the electrical engineering, from the computer engineering, from the mechanical engineering, from the material science from the civil engineering, the environmental engineering, okay, and from the bio, 
uh, bio uh, bio biologic or biology. Okay. So what we can think is that the chemical engineering is a kind of uh, music. You put all the instrument together, and can you make it become a nice song or not? Or you make a mess, it becomes very terrible, it cannot hear or not. So you put these two parts together. One is reaction. It's one reaction unit. One reaction unit like reactors, okay? The reaction processes. And this is physics process, physics, physics operation. Okay, there's not involved any chemicals, only pure physics process like heating, uh, evaporate, uh, distillation, extraction, filtration. This is all pure chemical, uh, pure physical process. But how are you going to make it a big scale process? That's the job of the chemical engineers. Okay, so you put these two together, you make an, you put this all the process together, and you become processes. Okay. So. As I just told you that chemical engineers is a uh, universal engineers, right? So um, you can go to many many uh, industries. For example, you go to um, uh, semiconductor industry, you go to environmental industry, you go to material. Some of you might go to a law. You know, you become a, a pattern of uh, a, a, a lawyer, especially for the uh, Pattern, okay. Right. So in the United States, the chemical engineers generally they make more money compared to other engineers. Okay. So like these engineers, they make more perfects, they make more monies compared to others. But for chemical engineering, we they make more. For example. The first one is chemical engineering. Okay, wow, oh, this not many, this this is gradual money. This uh, now is very little. Okay, the second one computer engineering, third one electrical engineering, fourth one mechanical engineering, computer science. Right, um, this might be not that correct at this moment because it's twenty years ago information. But anyway, engineering more, make more money compared to others. Okay, so just for your information. So, what is what can we do after you graduate from? Uh, after you get your first degree, I mean bachelor degree, what can you do? Well, you can you can study more, right? As a master degree or PhD. Or if you don't want to, if you doesn't like chemical engineering, you can you can take another subject. Like law or management, MBA, right? Or if you and then you can become, you go to another industry, or you want to become an engineer. So for the engineer, it becomes two parts. You go to the professional, like me, I'm a professor, right? Or you could become a consultant, or you become you work in the industry, you become um, a leader of the uh, the company. Okay. Right, so Chinese. <laughs> right, so I think um, this course is going to tell you the basic knowledge of the chemical engineering. I hope I want. I hope you learn something and you understand what's the 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 basic knowledge of the chemical engineering. That's the main reason we have this course for you. Okay. Right. So I think I finish the introduction today. Uh, from next week, we are. I'm going to start to go to chapter two, which is the the uh, technical part. This that is that won't be an introduction of chemical engineering anymore. 